The company Rivian has taken the world by storm with its recent IPO. They raised approximately $12 billion at a valuation of about $65 billion. This makes it the largest IPO in the US since Facebook went public in 2012. What's good you guys? This is Market Thrive. And today, we're going to talk about the precise nature of Rivian's business and whether or not they can ever support their billion valuation. Before we start the video, I would just like you to do me a favor by just hitting that subscribe button and the bell notification down below to keep you updated on this channel. So without further ado, let's hop into it. The stock price increased to $128 per share in the first few days after the shares began trading, giving them a valuation of almost $110 billion. They are therefore more valuable than Honda, Ford, and General Motors. Rivian is unusually ancient for a startup that is still in the pre-revenue stage. RJ Scringe, a mechanical engineer with an MIT education, started it back in 2009. That was more than 10 years ago. They initially attempted to create the R1, a hybrid electric sports car that they intended to debut in 2013. But they ultimately abandoned the concept, and the R1 never saw any commercial deliveries. It was a small business that ran until 2015 when it received an unknown investment of more than $100 million. They bought an old Mitsubishi factory in Illinois with this cash. Additionally, they changed their emphasis to fully autonomous and electric automobiles. They debuted the R1T fully electric pickup truck and the R1S fully electric SUV in 2018, which were to be their first two production models. These vehicles, known as adventure vehicles, were made to be extremely durable for off-roading driving. They assert that the pickup truck can drive in up to 1 meter of water, rise at a 45 degree incline, and pull up to 5,000 kilograms. For off-road drivers who want to cross tiny streams, this may be quite helpful. They also created features for autonomous driving such as automatic steering on particular motorways, adaptive cruise control, and the ability to change lanes on the highway. They have a construction similar to that of a skateboard, with a base frame that houses the battery, electric motor, and other electronic parts. The concept is that by simply placing alternative bodies on top of the current skateboards, they can quickly create new versions. Even at this point, dozens of brand new EV startups were competing to become the next Tesla. Nothing particularly remarkable about Rivian would make anyone think that it would increase in value to $110 billion in the ensuing three years. When they obtained $700 million in funding from Amazon and other investors in 2019, they really began to pick up speed. It initially appeared strange that Amazon would finance a fresh EV startup. Even though they were in the e-commerce industry and lacked any automotive knowledge, the internet juggernaut made this choice for highly strategic reasons. Every year, Amazon spends billions of dollars on logistics. The last mile of a package's delivery is one of the most expensive sections. In the past, Amazon has contracted out the majority of its last mile deliveries to companies like UPS or the US Postal Service. They have been constructing their own last mile logistics fleet in recent years, where they would personally deliver the products. They can improve efficiency and gain more control over the value chain by eliminating the middlemen USPS and UPS now use. However, they will require hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of vans if they wish to be totally self-sufficient. Amazon and Rivian agreed to buy 100,000 completely electric delivery trucks by 2030 shortly after announcing the agreement. Potentially, Amazon made a brilliant strategic choice with this action. They may work together to customize the delivery vehicle precisely to Amazon's desired requirements because they are Rivian's greatest shareholder and customer. According to them, the few hundred million dollars they spent to acquire their part in Rivian are nothing in comparison to the strategic alliance that may be worth billions of dollars over the coming 10 years. A few months later, Ford increased its investment in the business by $500 million, valuing it anywhere between $5 and $7 billion. To create an electric vehicle under their upscale Lincoln brand, they had originally intended to collaborate with Rivian. Their relationship was ultimately dissolved in the spring of 2020 owing to the uncertainties surrounding the pandemic. 
Rivian moved forward with the development of their pickup truck and SUV at full speed with the goal of releasing both of them in 2020 after receiving more than a billion dollars from reputable investors including Amazon and Ford. They ultimately had to repeatedly postpone the launch, citing the epidemic and the ensuing lack of semiconductors as the reason. By the time of their IPO, they had delivered a total of 156 automobiles since they began making deliveries in October 2021. Most of them went to Rivian workers. Despite this, investors still believe this firm should be valued more than GM, which shipped over 7 million vehicles last year and at least $100 billion. Surprisingly, even legendary investor Kathy Wood claimed Rivian was expensive and decided against purchasing any stock. Wood gained notoriety by investing in fast-growing technology firms like Tesla while the majority of Wall Street analysts claimed their prices were absurd. It begs the question of who is purchasing the shares when not even Kathy Wood will purchase Rivian. More than $11 billion were raised in their IPO. Large, long-term institutional investors like BlackRock, T. Rowe Price, and other sovereign wealth funds from throughout the world made up the majority of this. As opposed to Amazon, these investors are solely purchasing Rivian's stock as an instrument because they believe it to be undervalued. Can this pre-revenue company however really be considered inexpensive at a $110 billion valuation? The market value of Tesla is currently about $1 trillion. The stock may theoretically increase by 10 times from there if Rivian succeeds in becoming the next Tesla. And with an order from Amazon for 100,000 units, they have credibility now. According to the base case of Rivian's value, they will eventually need to expand to reach a scale that is at least on par with Tesla's. But how plausible is this? RJ Scaring, the creator and CEO of Rivian, says they intend to increase production to 1 million vehicles annually by the end of the decade. They now only have one Illinois manufacturing facility with a maximum annual production capacity of 150,000 automobiles. To increase production to 200,000 per year, they intend to expand this facility. To meet their goal of producing 1 million vehicles, however, they would still need four additional equivalent factories even at this enlarged scale. The IPO money will be used towards this, but they haven't made any specific plans just yet. Amazon has ordered 100,000 delivery vans from Rivian and the company has received 50,000 pre-orders for its consumer vehicles. Even if they can manage to create that many, the fact that the Amazon orders are spread out over 10 years makes it exceedingly improbable that there will be enough demand to sell 1 million vehicles annually. The base prices of R1T and R1S are both near to 75,000, placing them firmly in the high end of the EV market. Furthermore, it costs almost twice as much as a Tesla Cybertruck, the first deliveries of which are anticipated to occur within the next year. Additionally, in 2022, Ford will introduce the $40,000 starting price of its all-electric F-150 Lightning pickup vehicle. Despite the exceptional quality of Rivian's adventure vehicles, there will be fierce competition. Making less expensive cars is necessary if they hope to sell even a fraction of a million vehicles annually. For instance, Tesla didn't begin to scale up until they released their affordable Model 3. Prototyping something is one thing, but mass-producing it is an entirely different matter. When Tesla was scaling up production of the Model 3, they had to go through production hell, which forced the business to be just a few cents away from insolvency. They managed to pull Triumph from the jaws of loss and rise to the position of the most valuable vehicle manufacturer in the world right now by a combination of ingenuity and good fortune. Rivian has been around for more than 10 years, but it's never made any significant deliveries. It's unlikely that they will be able to endure their own form of manufacturing hell if they want to even come close to meeting the aim of 1 million cars. The introduction of their top SUV and pickup truck models had to be postponed numerous times. Most of this was attributed to supply chain difficulties brought on by COVID. However, there presumably would have been more delays even without COVID. In a statement describing the delays, they claimed that introducing three new vehicles while establishing a multi-vehicle manufacturing facility required a complex orchestra of coordinated and interrelated tasks where minor problems might cause significant delays. They appear to be already experiencing production hell and rushing to fulfill their goal of 1,000 deliveries. 
to reach their goal of 1 million deliveries, they will need to multiply the size of their operations by a factor of 1,000. FOMO can affect institutional investors like BlackRock and T. Rowe Price just as much as anyone else. Many of them likely lost out on Tesla and are now forced to trash dive in order to purchase speculative EV businesses in the hopes that they will develop into the next Tesla. If you believe Rivian will replace Tesla, you should also believe Wish.com will replace Amazon. Even while technically everything is possible, this generally shouldn't be your investment premise. A tenth of their current worth would have been lucky to be received by Rivian if they had gone public a few years ago. However, investors are now prepared to purchase virtually any EV stock at virtually any price due to the general euphoria around electric vehicles. EVs are the future, but the internet was the future during the 1990s tech boom, and we all know how that turned out. EVs are the future, but the internet was the future as well. Do you think Rivian's electric vehicles have the ability to compete with Tesla? Or do you think otherwise? Feel free to jot down your thoughts in the comment section below. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. And if you want to stay updated on our posts, hit that subscribe button as well. Once again, this is Market Thrive, signing off.